we all know we in Colorado and around the country are experiencing really an economic crisis. Um, it does have really a historic sense to it if you look at what the global crisis has been. Colorado remains in a better position than many states. And tomorrow we're going to have uh, our forecast for the next couple of years. Um, the December 20th forecast will be published tomorrow. We'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. But what I can tell you is that we remain in a better place. Having said that, we're not immune from the downturn. People are losing their jobs. Families are struggling. Companies are having trouble getting credit or capital. We're doing many, many things to help protect Colorado residents, to help protect Colorado jobs, and to protect Colorado businesses. We're holding job fairs. We've hosted small business workshops. And we're working closely with the incoming Obama administration on the recovery package. Many of those things that we're doing, we will continue doing, and we'll be doing around the entire state. We also did a lot in the 2008 legislative session including easing the tax burden for tens of thousands of large and small employers. Today we're introducing some additional steps we intend to take during the upcoming legislative session. Joining me today are business and economic development leaders from across Colorado. They include the Economic Development Council of Colorado, the Colorado Association of Commerce and Industry, the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce, the National Federation of Independent Businesses, Colorado Concern, the Northern Colorado Economic Development Council, the South Metro Chamber, the Colorado Springs EDC, the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority, Colorado's Bank, the Colorado Banking Association, the Independent Bankers of Colorado, Jim Lyons and Teresa Taylor, who are co-chairs of my Colorado Jobs Cabinet, and David Skaggs from the Department of Higher Education. We're also joined by representatives from the community college system because so much of what we need to do involves education and particularly higher education. Together we're pleased to present four proposals for our 200, 2009 Economic Development Legislative Package. These proposals will provide incentives for new jobs. They will help small businesses gain access to capital. They will invest in workforce training. They will support our existing clean energy fund and Colorado's new energy economy. First, let's talk about the new jobs incentive piece. We know that we all know that Colorado is limited when it comes to competing against other states for new jobs. But under this, under excuse me, but under this business attraction and expansion proposal, we would offer a tax credit companies that create a minimum of 20 new jobs, jobs that otherwise would not be added. So again, that's a tax credit for the creation of a minimum of 20 new jobs. You can show that these jobs would otherwise not be added. The jobs must be created for one full year, and the credit would equal 50% of a company's annual FICA obligation for each new FTE. Not only will this not cost the state dollars, because of the natural revenue growth created by new jobs and new employees in the economy, but it would free up resources for job retention, job training, and job retraining efforts. The second piece involves helping small businesses get access to capital and lines of credit. We believe we can leverage $2.5 million of state funds per year to generate more than $50 million in small business loans by reviving the Colorado Credit Reserve Program. Hundreds, maybe thousands of businesses would benefit. This program was shelved back in 2006 for a lack of funds. But I've been listening to small business owners, and this is something that they desperately need. This is absolutely a meaningful step to help the backbone of our economy here in Colorado. The third piece of the package involves job training. We would make a renewed investment of $1 million in the Colorado First Job Training Program, which is run through the community college system, concentrating on the new energy economy jobs. And finally, the fourth piece would invest $1.4 million in the Clean Energy Fund so we can continue to build the new energy economy, create new jobs, and keep people working in the field of renewable energy, 
energy efficiency, and energy conservation. In all, this package will help create new jobs, support business retention efforts, leverage small business loans, train and retrain employees, and continue to grow our new energy economy. I want to take a moment and thank the bill sponsors for their support and for the work that they'll do in passing this package. Senator Gail Schwartz, Senator-elect Raleigh Heath, Representatives Joe Rice, Nancy Todd, Don Morostica, and Representative-elect Ed Vigil. It is now my honor to introduce Don Elliman, who directs our Office of Economic Development. Don will be meeting with the Legislators Committee on Job Creation and Economic Development next week to work with them in further crafting these four proposals. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, I'd just like to re-emphasize one thing that the Governor said, and that is that everything that we're talking about today is about jobs. That, that is the, the metric that we measure our, our, our work by, and uh, whether it's enticing companies to grow here or to come here, whether it's uh, providing uh, capital assistance for small businesses to allow them to stay in business in the state and retain those jobs, or whether it's training new workers for, for new jobs in the new energy economy, all these proposals work in sync to, uh, to, to work against that metric, and, and it's absolutely critical that we do that. Uh, Jamie Gomez is going to follow me from Chaffa to talk about the Access to Capital program, uh, which we are doing in concert with the banking community of the state. And in fact, the Colorado Bankers Association today is going to uh, issue a press release of their own, which will talk about the fact that lending in Colorado is actually up. Um, they have been good partners in, our, in the development of this, and Don Childers is here, and uh, I, I want to thank them for being the partners that they've been. Uh, we need to do more. They know that. We know that. We know that, and Jamie will talk some more about that. Holly Baumach is going to talk about what, what this looks like from the perspective of the Economic <coughs> Development Commission of Colorado across the board, and, and I think my role is to add just a little bit of color to the uh, Job Creation Incentive Program which is uh, probably the headline of, of the measures in this package. Uh, as the governor said, we operate in a very competitive environment. Uh, virtually every job creation opportunity that we are presented with uh, today is in competition with another state in the United States, sometimes other countries as well, but, but more often than not, other states. We honestly believe that this proposal that we are making to the legislature will give us the opportunity to compete in the sectors that we already have a strong foundation in, but lack the last incentive dollar piece of the puzzle. So we are, we are confident uh, that it is, it is a net positive, both to state revenue and state job creation, and we are pretty darn excited about the prospect of being able to use it. Uh, it can work with existing company expansion, and it can work with new company attraction. Uh, it will allow us, frankly, to build on our strengths. Uh, I, I greatly look forward to the day when I have that tool in my, in my toolbox. So I'm going to stop there and turn it over to Jamie to talk about the, uh, the access to capital portion of the program. Jamie. Thank you, Don. Good afternoon. My name is Jamie Gomez, and I'm the director of the Commercial Lending Division for the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority. And on behalf of the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority, we are pleased to be at the table with Governor Ritter and his economic development team as they unveiled this economic development plan designed to keep Colorado in Oregon. Most often, CHAP is noted for its commitment to increasing the construction and preservation of affordable housing. 